Apple's planning an absolutely massive update for the Mac Studio, likely coming at their WWDC event on June 10th, according to a huge leak by Trendforce. So in this video, I'm gonna explain why and how I know that the new Ultra chip is gonna be better than anyone is expecting, and I'm gonna give you guys a couple of possibilities, including how Apple might actually skip the M3 Ultra and just give us the M4 Ultra right away, as well as why in the world they would do this. Jumping right into it, the main piece of info that was recently revealed as a fact and not just a leak is that the current M3 Max chip that we have in the new MacBook Pros, which was completely redesigned with more performance cores, no longer comes with the Ultra Fusion connector on the bottom of the die. Yes, take a look at both of these screenshots that were leaked by Tech Analy on Twitter, showing the M1 Max on the left, the M2 Max in the center, and M3 Max on the right, completely missing the Ultra Fusion portion of silicon that is meant to combine two of these dies together to create the Ultra chip, which is a genius idea by Apple, but it definitely has some flaws. So if we're looking for reasons for why Apple would do this on the M3 Max die, I figured out three of them, starting with the fact that both the M1 and M2 Ultra chips that used these Ultra Fusion connection methods had issues with performance scaling. For example, when doubling the number of GPU cores from the M2 Max to the M2 Ultra, the performance didn't improve by anywhere near double, but only around 79% more in a GPU benchmark that scaled almost perfectly from the M2 Pro to the M2 Max. On top of that, the Ultra chip didn't really improve video editing performance and especially exporting by that much, so we told people to save money and just buy the M2 Max, and especially now that the M3 Max is so much faster than it was before. And going even further, because the Ultra chip is made out of two Max dies, it comes with a bunch of unnecessary silicon that doesn't really add much value to a desktop Mac like the Mac Studio. For example, it doesn't need eight efficiency cores. The second neural engine wouldn't really be used at all, and same with the AMX process units that wouldn't be used properly, or let's say the extra eight display engines that would be useless, or the extra set of transcoders that weren't able to be used properly, and a bunch of other silicon as well. So the first theory for why Apple removed the Ultra Fusion connector on the M3 Max die is that Apple actually planned to redesign the M3 Ultra chip from the ground up, no longer being tied to exactly double of what you get with the Max die, which means that it no longer has to come with a bunch of extra silicon baggage that doesn't work properly anyway. Well, it means that Apple can use that precious silicon space that was wasted and swap it out for something more useful like extra performance and GPU cores, as well as fine tuning exactly how many media engines and Thunderbolt controllers they actually need for the Mac Studio. And instead of having an extra media engine that doesn't really do anything, they can make one of them with higher performance and finally, they can get rid of all of those extra efficiency cores that don't even matter on a desktop Mac and replace them with more performance CPU cache or literally anything else they need. And guess what leak we got back in January? According to Corp Cry on Twitter, who had quite a few leaks correct in the past, the new M3 Ultra or higher tier chips won't come with efficiency cores anymore, which now makes so much sense now that we know that the M3 Max no longer comes with Ultra Fusion, which means the Ultra has to be redesigned from the ground up. But the biggest advantage of that is the performance scaling improvement. Movement. Because the Ultra chip will no longer be made up of two dies that have to communicate with each other through Ultra Fusion, those performance scaling issues should completely go away, which should instantly boost performance by up to 20% even before considering the extra cores Apple can now easily add in 
thanks to no longer needing all the extra fluff, as well as the three nanometer node improvements that will allow even more cores to be added. Now getting into the second reason why Apple would remove the Ultra Fusion connector from the Max die and make a unique M3 Ultra design, that reason is that Apple's M3 lineup of chips is based on a flawed three nanometer node from TSMC. It's a long story, but I'll try to make it short. TSMC's three nanometer chips were supposed to be out in 2022 in the new iPhone 14 models, but they got delayed by all of the supply chain issues. So the new release date would be in 2024 with TSMC's N3E silicon node. The only problem is that Apple wanted them much sooner, so they worked with TSMC on a completely unique and custom three nanometer node that they would be able to get out a full year sooner, which is known as the N3B node. The only problem is that N3B isn't compatible with the industry-wide N3E node, as well as the future three nanometer nodes like N3P and N3X. So because of that, the rest of the chip industry like Qualcomm and Google didn't think it was worth designing a chip for N3B just to have to do it all over again for N3E, so they decided to just wait. But Apple, on the other hand, wanted to be the first to three nanometer, so they adopted N3B for the A17 Pro and M3 chips, which means that when the new N3E chips come out, the chip designs have to be fully redesigned so that they're compatible with the future N3P node. So if we consider the idea of Apple having to fully redesign the Ultra chip, it would be foolish to do it on the one-off N3B node that's incompatible with all of the future nodes. And guess what leak we had back in January from Trendforce? Alongside mentioning that the Mac Studio will launch in the middle of this year after WWDC, they also claimed that Apple will build the new Ultra chip using TSMC's fully compatible future N3E node right away, making it Apple's first N3E chip before even the A18 chip comes later in September. Why? Well, because the N3E node reportedly has much better yields, so it'll be less expensive to manufacture these Ultra chips compared to if they were on N3B. And then of course, it would mean that this new Ultra chip redesign would be able to be reused again next time around since it's fully compatible. And now for reason number three, we have the kicker that wraps up this genius plot. Since this new Ultra chip will be the first built on N3E, it actually makes sense for Apple to call it the M4 Ultra, completely skipping M3 altogether. Why? Well, because Apple's had a huge issue with their lineup ever since the M1 family of chips, because they started with the base M1 chip MacBook Air before releasing the M1 Pro and Max, and then finally the M1 Ultra. And the problem is that the MacBook Air ended up cannibalizing the sales of all of the more expensive Macs since it was so good. And we actually have that problem right now with the M2 Ultra Mac Studio that no one wants to buy because the M3 Max chip is so dang powerful and comes with a bunch of new GPU features like ray tracing, which the M2 Ultra chip doesn't have. So no one is buying the Mac Studio right now and especially not the Mac Pro. So what Apple can do is completely reverse the lineup, introducing the latest and greatest chip technology and process nodes for the most expensive Macs first, like the M4 Ultra chip with new features in the Mac Studio or Mac Pro, forcing everyone who wants the latest M4 tech to pay up. And then a few months later, they can release the M4 Pro and M4 Max chips for the high-end MacBook Pros, which many people would buy because the MacBook Air that we have now would still only have the M3 chip at this point, so it can't cannibalize the sales of the more expensive Macs. And then a few months after that, the M4 chip would finally arrive for the MacBook Air and low-end MacBook Pro, which means that people would either have to wait longer for these cheaper M4 Macs or just cough up the extra cash early 
for the higher end Mac machines. Apple actually started doing that with the M3 family of Macs when they surprisingly delayed the MacBook Air until just last month while launching the more expensive M3 series MacBook Pros way back in October to make sure that the Air doesn't cannibalize the sales of the Pros and it worked. But now imagine that on a grand scale with the M4 family of chips, beginning with the M4 Ultra Mac Studio and Mac Pro. But now the only weird part about all of this is that the Mac Studio also comes with the Max chip alongside the Ultra option, so I'm not sure what would happen there, but we did get a very curious leak that hinted at the upcoming iPad Pro with a brand new chip identifier T8132, which would mean that it would get the M4 chip. Because apparently, chips using the new N3E node have been in production since December of last year, according to Ty on Twitter. So Apple may be planning to ditch the N3B node as soon as possible and quickly skip to the M4 sooner rather than later. So what if Apple just goes nuts and releases the entire M4 chip lineup at WWDC while releasing a new M4 iPad Pro, M4 and M4 Pro Mac Mini, M4 Max and M4 Ultra Mac Studio, and Mac Pro. I know it sounds insane, but who knows? So hopefully you enjoyed this crazy speculative video, and if you did, go ahead and click the button above to subscribe for more videos like this one. Definitely check out one of those right there. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.